with uh, Brother Christian in preparation for uh, finishing, first of all, Vacation Bible School and then in preparation for camp, as well as just a number of projects around the church that we'll tell you about some other time. Uh, we'll also dismiss Brother Dave and the uh, Pathfinders class this morning. I trust the Lord will bless. That's the college and career age class. Everyone else, if you take your Bibles and turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Second Corinthians chapter 5, and we'll begin reading in verse number 17. Second Corinthians chapter 5, and verse number 17. The Bible says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away, behold, all things are become new. And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation, to wit, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation." Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Let's read verse 21 again. For he hath made him, Jesus, to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Our title this morning is a, a bit of a lengthy one, and our sermon this morning is even longer than that. Our title today is this, What Happened the Day I Got Saved? What Happened the Day I Got Saved? Lord, we rejoice in uh, what we've seen and what we've heard. Thank you, Lord, for letters that were written about the works that are being done around the country and around the world. Thank you for the video presentation for the Martinez family and, Lord, uh, for, for two souls that were saved this last month in their ministry. Lord, we rejoice. Thank you, Lord, for the progress that's being made. Thank you, Lord, for your strength in Brother Mark recovering. Please be with Brother Noah this morning as he preaches there. And What a significant opportunity it is, Lord, and, and yet, Lord, what a weight as well. So we ask, Lord, you would help that baby church and, and, Lord, use moments like this to strengthen them and to guide them. Lord, uh, we thank you for the Retton Box and their continual work uh, on the East Coast, Lord, in Connecticut and Massachusetts. And Lord, we ask that you bless in their endeavors. Lord, it was good to hear of the church in Nixa and, and uh, you, you putting it all together and rebuilding it, reestablishing it. Uh, Lord, you are a good God. Would you bless, Lord, our time together in the Word this morning. We thank you for the souls that were saved here, uh, Lord, in Sunday school and Vacation Bible School. And, uh, Lord, we rejoice in that. Please be with our camp week that we might have multiples that are saved. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. Amen. Before we get into the lesson, Brother Christian this morning or this last week informed me that there's at least 10 teenagers from our church that are unsaved and that are, are going to camp. At least 10 from our church that are unsaved. And so uh, we praise the Lord for that, that we might have opportunity for people to be saved. Um, years ago, uh, I was at a, a camp and we were asking for prayer requests for those that were unsaved. And several of the youth pastors said, no, everybody we brought saved, everybody we brought saved, everybody we brought saved. And I told Christian at that time, he wasn't even hired yet. I said, if you ever go to camp and say, everybody we brought is saved, you're fired. You're fired. Just count that as your resignation. You're fired. Because we're not called to, uh, 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 to minister just to the healthy. We're called to minister to the sick and to go out into the highways and hedges and to compel them to come in. So please be in prayer uh, for souls being saved this week, and particularly uh, the, at least 10 from our youth department that we know of that would profess from their own mouth uh, that they are lost. Well, what really happened the day I got saved? Can I tell you this morning, remind you this morning, I shouldn't have to tell you, but just remind you this morning that salvation is the defining experience in a person's life. It is the defining moment in a person's life. It is the moment where everything changes. I think of defining moments in my life, probably next to my salvation, uh, my wedding day was kind of a defining moment. 
That, that was a big deal. Since that day to now, uh, every time I come home, Melissa is there. Uh, she just, she's, she follows me places. She, when, I, when I go on vacation, she wants to come with. It's just, she's always there. That's just how that works. Uh, uh, another defining moment was when I left to go to college. I, I moved out of the home. That was a, a defining moment. Things changed from that. A defining moment was when Brooke went to college this last year, and, and that was a defining moment in my life. The, the birth of my children were defining moments. Uh, when I became pastor of Calvary Baptist Temple uh, in January of 2009 was a defining moment, and, and uh, uh, I love these defining moments, but all of them, listen, if you were to stack all of those defining moments up, and on one end of a scale, and then my salvation at the other end of the scale, my salvation is more, and is more defining, and more things were different after salvation than all of those other things combined. Yeah. And so this morning, there will probably be nothing that we will say today that will be new, but I'm hoping that the cumulative weight of what we will say today about our salvation will be a motivating factor uh, uh, for us in our life. I want to be honest with the text this morning, or honest with some of my notes. A lot of the, the uh, points that we got this morning are from a Dr. Bob Ream, and so I just want to give credit where credit is due. If I plagiarize, um, well, I, I heard it this way. If you steal one man's work, it's plagiarism. If you take two men's work and combine them, it's Bible study. And so we trust that this indeed will be a Bible study. Notice, if you will, in our text this morning, some things that happened the day I got saved. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. The day I got saved, I became a new creation. I became a new creature. That is a wonderful thing. I don't know what means more, the fact that I became new or that the old was passed away, that the man that I was is gone. Listen, all of my sin... And the individual, the Park Sutton that I was, all of my sins, all of my choices, all of my regrets, the day I got saved disappeared, all right? Uh, uh, God made all things new. I became a new creation. I became a new creature. Everything else was passed away and gone. Next, in verse number 18, we got to hurry this morning. I'd also encourage you, uh, we're going to be looking kind of topically at some things, and so uh, we'll be going to a variety of portions of the scriptures. They probably just want to jot some of them down so you can check them later uh, as the Lord would lead. Verse number 18, and all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given uh, uh, to us the ministry of recon reconciliation. I was reconciled to God. The moment I got saved, I was reconciled to God. Uh, we would probably use the term reconciliation or reconciled uh, in our vo vernacular, our vocabulary, most commonly about a husband and a wife who've possibly separated. Uh, they, they've gone their own way. They, their marriage wasn't working, and so they, they were trying something different. And then, through maybe the Word of God or, or through some counseling, they became reconciled. They, they came back together. And listen, this morning, uh, I was born, and because I was in, conceived in sin, I was born a sinner. I was born separated from God. Adam and Eve were walking with God in the garden in the cool of the day. Thought about that this last week. Imagine how awesome that must have been to literally walk with God and talk with God physically and commune with Him in the garden. But sin separated us. Sin caused a chasm to exist between us. But the day I got saved, I was reconciled back to God. He and I and our differences got fixed and we got put back together. And when I say our differences got fixed, my sin got fixed. That was the problem between the two of us, and we were reconciled back to God. Number three this morning, we're hurrying because we have 31 points. I'm not joking, all right? That wasn't funny. Okay, uh, 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 we were reconciled. Number three, we were given a ministry the day we got saved. The day we got saved, we were given a ministry. Notice what it says right there at the end of verse number 18, and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. Just like we were reconciled to God, we now get to reconcile other people to God. Now, we don't do the fixing, but we certainly do the introduction. We certainly introduce them one to another. If I were to tell you this morning that I found a new business venture and uh, uh, I've been investing in this venture and, man, it's really worked well so far. In the last month, I've made $10,000 and the month before that, I made $8,000 and, man, I'd have your undivided attention. You'd be like, wow, what's this business venture? How can I do it? Robbing people. Um, so, 
you would be impressed. You would, want to, you would want to follow that because you were seeing the benefits of that. Listen, once we got saved, we were given the ministry to tell other people that God can do for them exactly what God has done for us. We were given the ministry of reconciling people back to God. In verse number 20, we're even given a cool title because not only do we have a cool job, we have a cool title. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God did beseech you, we pray you in Christ's stead, be reconciled to God. Uh, uh, our society today values titles. Used to be they were a trash collector. Now they're a sanitation engineer. Well, we, we put cool little titles on those things. And, and it used to be you work fast food. Now you are in a, uh, the service industry or you work for a multi-billion dollar company. McDonald's, all right? Uh, we, we put all kinds of titles on it, but here we're given the title of an ambassador for Christ. Uh, if I were to tell you this morning that I got picked to be an ambassador maybe to, to England or, or Switzerland and, and represent America, we would think that a significant uh, achievement. We would think that a, a significant uh, job description. You and I this morning are ambassadors for Christ. We get to be representatives of Jesus Christ in a heathen land to show forth who He is and what He is and what He wants done. It even says in our text, we pray you in Christ's stead. You know, Jesus Jesus Christ is not going to witness to anybody today. So we have to. No, no. He's the one that's going to do the saving, but we're the ones that get to do the witnessing, and so we were given a, a ministry the day we got saved. We are made righteous the day we got saved. Verse number 21. For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Have you ever spent time around someone that was like a super Christian? And I don't mean they thought they were a super Christian. I mean, you thought they were a super Christian. And you just, every time you were around them, you felt like you weren't as good a Christian as you should be because you just... Now, there are certain people that are, that are like that in my life, and every time I'm around them, I just feel like I, I should do more. When I spend time around Brother Carl Boonstra, I love being around Brother Boonstra, but I just feel like I should, I should do more. I should, I should read my Bible more. I should, there's just more that should be done, and, and, I, and I need to do that. No, no, he says here in our text that we were given the righteousness of God, that we might be made the righteousness of God in Him. This is the doctrine of imputation. Uh, uh, his righteousness was imputed to us, our wickedness and our sinfulness was imputed to Him. And so, because the day I got saved, all of Christ's righteousness was imputed to me. It was imputed to my account. And so, as God looks at me this morning, He does not see my sin, as the song says. He sees the righteousness and the perfection that is Jesus Christ. That, no, 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 no. We can't. We're, we got 31 points, but we're not going to hurry if we can't grasp the significance of this. That means everything that I ever did wrong, uh, uh, the Bible says that that was wiped away and placed upon Jesus Christ, and instead I got His righteousness the day that I got saved. The doctrine of imputation, all his sin was laid upon him, uh, all of our sin was laid upon him, and all of his righteousness was laid upon us. Listen, if I, if I thought Brother uh, 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 Carl Boonster was righteous, how much more the righteousness of Christ that was placed upon me. Looking at other verses of Scripture now, in terms of our salvation this morning, the day I got saved, everything was forgiven. The day I got saved, everything was forgiven. Luke chapter 7 and verse number 48, And he said unto her, Thy sins are forgiven. Thy sins are forgiven. We did it. We're guilty. Yep. No, the, the, it's not that we stood before a judge and we were found not guilty. We've stood before a judge and been found guilty but then we've been set free and been forgiven. Don't, don't miss the, 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 the significance of, of the distinction there. It's not as if you and I didn't need forgiveness. It's not as if we go, well, I didn't need as much forgiveness as, as some others. Well, you may not have committed as many sins as some others, but all of us had committed the primary sin of rejecting Jesus Christ. We had committed the sin of being born into sin. And so we had a need of a Savior. And the moment I got saved, everything that I had ever done before I got saved was forgiven. Amen. Everything. Every lie I had ever told, forgiven. Uh, every wicked thought I'd ever had, forgiven. How about all the things I didn't do that I should have done? 
The times I didn't read my Bible, that was forgiven. Everything was forgiven. And hear me, not only was I forgiven for everything that I had done, I was forgiven for the punishment and penalty of everything I would do. My sins were forgiven past, present, and future. Now that doesn't mean Romans chapter 6 talks about what should we sin the more that grace may abound. God forbid. We'll talk even about that a little bit later on this morning. Uh, the wonder of Galatians, or excuse me, of Romans chapter 6. But uh, uh, the reality of it is, I'm forgiven. Listen, if I sin twice today, I know that'd be a big day for me. Make sure you're paying attention. If I sin twice today and died before I confessed it or asked for forgiveness, I'm still going to go to heaven because Jesus Christ already forgave me for everything past, present, and future. Not only are we forgiven next this morning, we are justified. Romans chapter 5 and verse number 1. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Romans 4, 5. But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. When I got saved, I was made just as if I'd never sinned. Just as if I'd never sinned. Uh, many of you know, uh, uh, last year, uh, my daughter, we had uh, gotten her a new vehicle. The Lord worked it out. It, not a new vehicle, a new vehicle for us, so 20 years old. Um, uh, so she could go to take it to Bible college. And, and uh, she decided to uh, pull up to a four-way stop and, and look both ways but not see, you know, the car that was coming and pull out in front of the car and boom, got got her car got totaled the lord protected everybody thank the lord for that but uh, uh so we got her a different vehicle and now when i talk to her i kind of talk to her a little different about her driving no I'm, I'm like okay be careful okay uh don't listen whatever radio station you have it set on when you leave the parking lot leave it set on that radio station don't be changing the radio station don't be texting and driving don't be goofing off with your friends don't be i i didn't say those things before i say that now and every time I confess, every time the phone rings and I see that it's Brooke, I'm like, what now? I'm like, I'm like what now? Hear me this morning. When we go to God, God's not going, what now? Because it's impossible for us to look at people who've wronged us and not remember that they've wronged us. It's impossible for us as humans to not forget that they've wronged us. But when God looks at us, he does not look at us as if we have wronged him. He has justified us, made us just as if I'd never sinned. So when I go to him and I say, Lord, I've sinned, he doesn't go, oh, again, you mean? Like for the fifth time? Because we've talked about this one a few times before. No, 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 no. He talks to me as if it's the first time I've ever committed it, as if it's the first time I've ever done it. Come on, that's amazing. That's amazing. His justification that took place the day I got saved. Number six this morning, or number seven, excuse me, we are glorified. I was glorified the day I got saved. Let me explain. Romans 8, 29 and 30. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son. Let me just interject. Uh, the word predestination is often misused to teach the doctrine of Calvinism that is not biblical whatsoever. But nonetheless, in this context, we are predestined. No, no, we're predestined to be conformed to the image of his son. All of us that are saved are supposed to reflect well upon Jesus Christ. We are predestined to be conformed to the image of Jesus Christ. That's our destiny. That's what God wants from us. And that he might be firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. And whom he called, them he also justified. And whom he also justified, them he also glorified. God exalted me the day I got saved. What do you mean he exalted me? He exalted me and look what I can do. Okay, I, I'm sorry. I always default back to sports analogies. I realize they're not the, the greatest analogies for some folks in our church, but I always default back to sports analogies. Years ago, years ago, years ago, the Orlando Magic, the basketball team, the Orlando Magic, they were trying to tank. They were trying to lose. They traded away all their veteran players. They got rid of everybody that had ever played a game in the NBA, and they played with basically scrubs that they had signed off the street. Everybody on their team made minimum wage for NBA, and the idea was to lose as many games as is possible so that they could try to get a higher draft pick because Shaquille O'Neal was coming out and they were trying to, 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 to get a higher draft pick. Anyhow, uh, uh, Coach Rivers uh, was, the, was the coach. He's a brand new coach. He's a former player. So they hired a brand new coach to coach a bunch of misfits that they signed out of nowhere, and they ended up making the playoffs. 
with, with a bunch of nobodies, with, with, with a bunch of nothings. And, and, and Coach Rivers, since then, has been exalted as a very successful coach. He has, he's coached the Clippers. He's coached the 76ers. Uh, he's won uh, a world championship with the Boston Celtics. He is a very highly acclaimed coach. And yet he will tell you, the best job I ever did was that year with the Orlando Magic when we had nobody and we had nothing and we still found a way to win. He was exalted as a coach. Don't miss this. He was exalted as a coach because who he was able to win with. Maybe we could phrase it this way. Who he was able to win in spite of. I was glorified the day I got saved in that God goes, look what I can do with a jacked up Park Sutton. It's good stuff. It's glorified. I was redeemed. Revelation chapter 5 and verse number 9. And they sung a new song saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof. For thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by the blood out of every cringed, kindred, tongue, and people, and nation. First Peter 1, 18 and 19. For as much as you know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold uh, from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as a lamb without blemish and without spot. Thou hast redeemed us to God by the blood. And praise the Lord, I was redeemed. I was bought back. I, I, I was created into fellowship with God. Uh, mankind was created into fellowship with God. We went away from God and we were bought back. I like the, uh, the expression here, out of every kindred, tongue, people, and nation. So every segment of society is just as welcome as any other segment of society at the foot of the cross and through the blood and through, through redemption. Uh, we sing that song um, uh, uh, about uh, uh, one day we'll stand before the Lord of every uh, kindred, tribe, and tongue. And, and uh, Mark was telling me when he was in Mexico, they were working one day and he couldn't speak he doesn't mark doesn't speak spanish none of the people he was working with spoke any english and so they were working together and one of them started singing that song mark recognized the tune so mark started singing in english as they were singing in spanish and so not being able to understand each other they were singing about someday we'll stand before the bar the throne of god from every kindred tribe and tongue Come on, that's pretty awesome. That's a pretty special moment. And then a 15-year-old would go, whoo, that was good, Dad. No, no, that's good stuff because we're bought back. We are redeemed back into his fellowship. Listen, the day I got saved, number, number nine this morning, I got an advocate. I got an advocate. First John chapter 2 and verse one, number 1. My little children, these things write unto you that ye sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. The day I got saved, I got better than a lawyer. I got an advocate. Listen, a lawyer will stand up and try to say you're not guilty. A lawyer will try to stand up and say, no, there's some legal loophole as to why you shouldn't be punished. A lawyer will stand there and, and try to weasel his way out of it. An advocate will stand alongside you, listen to me, and he will suffer punishment if you suffer punishment. Jesus Christ became my advocate. He became the one who stands in between. He stands up and He suffers loss. We have an advocate with the Father. Jesus Christ the righteous. No longer alone. No longer do I stand in my own merit. Not in my own strength. But in the substitutionary position of Jesus Christ. The advocate is one who stands in the place of. I got the advocate Jesus Christ the day I got saved. Number 10 this morning, the day I got saved, I got the possibility of victory over sin. I got the possibility of victory over sin. Romans chapter 6, verses 1 and 2. Romans chapter 6 has been heralded as this. I think it's a very appropriate description. It is the emancipation proclamation for the Christian. No, no, the Emancipation Proclamation, 1863, is what said the slaves were no longer slaves. They could go free. Uh, Romans chapter 6 is the Emancipation Proclamation for the believers. Romans chapter 6, verse 1. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Verse 6. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed. Listen to this. That henceforth... We should not serve sin. Verse 11. Likewise reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Verse 14. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but under grace. Because of Romans chapter 6, and because of what happened the day I got saved, I don't have to sin anymore. I don't have to be the servant to sin anymore. I can get victories over what we would call the besetting sins, which for every one of us might be different. We, we look around and we go, oh, that person commits that sin and, and uh, uh, that's fine. Okay, well, they're tempted in that area. Uh, we're tempted in different areas. 
I have, I have confessed this freely. Um, with my love of sports and my uh, uh, pride in thinking I can figure out things, if I ever started gambling, I'd be dead broke. If I ever started gambling, you'd find me in Vegas walking around going, I just had five more dollars. I think I've got to figure it out. No, that, that, that would be my besetting sin. That, that, would, be my, that would be my temptation. Uh, and because of Jesus Christ, uh, I can get victory over that. I, I bet you I won't bet. We can get victory over the things. We, we, we somewhat joke this morning, but in all actuality, there are, there are things that we struggle with. We struggle with depression. We struggle with our past. We struggle with bitterness. We struggle with pornography. We struggle with cigarettes. We struggle with, with, with arrogance. We struggle with whatever. No, no. Because of Jesus Christ, we can get victory over those things. Permanent victory over those things. We still have the old nature, but we also have a new nature that will allow us to fight the old one if we wish. We were talking yesterday and, and uh, the old idiom and, and uh, uh, sort of uh, 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 legend, if you would, that all of us within us have two dogs. We have the, uh, the, the evil dog and the good dog. Which one wins? Whichever one you feed the most. Whichever one you feed the most. And so because of, of Christ and because of my salvation, I have the opportunity to get victory over besetting sins in my life. We don't have to sin. We have been freed from sin. Number 11, we have access to God's grace. Ephesians 2.8, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves it is the gift of God. 2.18, Ephesians 2.18, For through Him we both have access by one Spirit unto the Father. We have access to grace. Listen, grace is unmerited favor. So if I have to do something to get grace, it's no longer grace. So you go, well, I don't have to do anything to get grace. No, you still have to do something to get grace. Well, then if you're doing something to get grace, it's no longer grace. No, it, it's like this. Uh, uh, how many of you have ever um, had a, a, a cell phone that's dying and somebody goes, well, I've got a charger, but it's the wrong charger? And so, or maybe you, you grab the charger from home and you, you, you've got your phone, you've got the charger, and you're, you're, you're looking at an electrical outlet all the power you could ever need to charge your phone is right there. But you can't access it. You've got the wrong charger. Salvation gives me access to grace. Jesus Christ is what gives me access to grace. Uh, humility, if I had humbled myself before the Lord, He resisted the proud, but He giveth grace unto the humble. I have access to grace, unmerited favor, because of Jesus Christ the day I got saved. Number 12, I was adopted into the family of God. The day I got saved. I was adopted into the family of God. In Galatians chapter 4 and verse number 5. To redeem them that were under the law. That we might receive the adoption of sons. Ephesians chapter 1 and verse number 5. Having predestinated us unto the adoption of children. By Jesus Christ to himself. According to the good pleasure of his will. Not only was I adopted into the family of God. I was adopted by his pleasure into the family of God. John chapter 1 verse number 12 but as many as received him to them gave he power to become the sons of God even to them that believe on his name I was adopted I was born again into the family of God the day I got saved and it pleased God to do it it pleased God to do it God wasn't up there like oh another one him no, it, it, it pleased him to welcome me into the family of God. The day I got saved, I was given an inheritance. I was promised an inheritance. Romans chapter 8 and verse number 17. And if children, then heirs. Heirs of God. We're going to stop there. We've all probably pretended at one point in time that our great uncle died, that we don't even knew that we had, and that he was a billionaire. And we've inherited a billion dollars. Some of you are staring at me like, you are sick and twisted. Um, not like an actual uncle I know, but like an uncle you don't know. You're just, you're just dreaming that, that you would receive this inheritance and you'd... No, no, listen, someday I'm going to receive an inheritance from God. Not because I've earned it, because you don't earn an inheritance. You receive an inheritance. I will receive an inheritance from God, and I was promised that inheritance the day I got saved. Now let me read on in Romans 8, 17. And if children, then heirs... Heirs of God. This next part, I promise you, this next part seems sacrilegious. It seems, it seems like a lie. It seems inappropriate to say, but it's in the Bible. And joint heirs with Christ. Joint heirs with Christ. Someday I'm going to get an inheritance in heaven equal to Jesus Christ. That seems blasphemous to say. 
But that's what the book says. That's what happened the day I got saved. Colossians 3.24, knowing that of the Lord ye shall receive the reward of the inheritance, for ye serve the Lord Christ. Uh, number 14 this morning, the day I got saved, I was granted heavenly citizenship. Ephesians 2.19, now therefore ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God. Uh, I love it when I hear people coming to our country and doing things the right way, taking their citizenship test, becoming a United States citizens. I, I, I love that. Uh, listen, the day I got saved, I got my heavenly papers. Now, God didn't drop them from the sky. He didn't fax them to me. But I have heavenly citizenship from the day I got saved. Number 15, the day I got saved, I became the servant of God. I became the servant of God, Romans 6.22. But now, being made free from sin and become servants to God, ye have fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. The day I got saved, I became a servant. Amen. Became a servant. Now, I'm either a good servant or a bad servant based on my choices and my actions, but the day I got saved, I became a servant of God. Number 16 this morning, the day I got saved, I became a priest of God. First Peter chapter 2 and verse number, nine, verse number 9, but you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and a holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should uh, uh, show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. We are a royal priesthood. The day I got saved, there was no longer a need for me to talk to anyone else to talk to God. I can talk to God. Aren't you? Whoa, 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 let's just stop. Uh, we don't have time, but we're going to take time. Aren't you glad that when you do something wrong, you don't have to come into our church and confess to me that you did something wrong before God will hear you again? You know how, much, how difficult that would be for me to like you if I knew everything about you? Heard the story of the, never mind, I won't. I'll tell you another joke some other time, all right? The punchline is the Catholic priest says, my sin's gossip and I can't wait to get home. Um, I'm glad this morning that we can just talk to God. We don't have to, no, no. I can, I can go to my God in private and talk to him and know I have access because of the person of Jesus Christ. I'm accepted in the beloved the day I got saved. Ephesians chapter 1 and verse number 6. To the praise of the glory of his grace wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved. I'm accepted. No, I not will be accepted. I not could be accepted. I not was. I, I, I'm, I'm accepted in the beloved. Present perfect tense. It's ongoing. I am accepted in the beloved. Uh, whether you accept me, whether other people accept me, whether you love me, whether you don't love me. And I hope that you do. I don't, I'm not dismissing that. But I am accepted in the beloved. I'm accepted in the beloved of Jesus Christ. We are made complete, Colossians 2, 10 through 12. And you are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power. 2 Peter 1, 3, according as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue. You are no longer incomplete. You're no longer missing anything. Oh no, we still need to grow in our faith and mature in our, in our relationship with the Lord. But our, our growth and our immaturity is not because we are lacking something. We already have everything we need from God to be successful in serving him. We are made complete. The day I got saved, I was indwelt by Christ. Jesus came into my heart. John 14, 23, Jesus answered and said to them, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him, and will come into him and make our abode with him. The day I got saved, Jesus Christ came into my heart. I, he'll never leave me. He'll never forsake me. By the way, I can never lose it. By the way, I can never lose it. We are possessors of eternal life. John chapter 10 and verse number 28. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. So much for losing our salvation. Look, 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 look. If we could lose our salvation, we would lose our salvation. If we could lose our salvation, I, would, I guarantee you I would have lost it this week. I don't know that I would have lost it this morning. It's been a pretty good morning. But I guarantee you I would have lost it this week. We cannot lose our salvation. We are possessors of eternal life. We were given access to peace with God the moment I got saved. Philippians 4, 7. And the peace of God that passeth all understanding shall keep your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. I have it phrased this way in my notes. Jesus signed the peace treaty. Jesus' blood signed the peace treaty. The moment I got saved, I became the friend of God. John 15, 15. Henceforth I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth, but I have called you Friends, for all things that I have heard of my Father, I have made known unto you. I'm the friend of God. And he's the one that called me that. That's pretty awesome. 
That, that's pretty awesome. Okay, years ago, Brother Al, Al Lacey uh, uh, came to Bible college to preach, and everybody was super excited when Brother Lacey was coming to preach. And I was like, oh, yeah, I know Brother Lacey. He comes to our church, and, you know, him and my dad are good friends. And people were like, yeah, sure, you know Brother Lacey, whatever. You know. And services had started. Brother Lacey was walking down the aisle, and he walked back and kind of did a double take like that. He goes, well, park. And he came over and gave me a big hug and shook my hand. And, we just, uh, and I'm like, and then he got up and bragged about me and talked about how long he had known my family and wasn't even, didn't know I was even there and it was great to see me and this, that, and the other. And the school was lucky to have me and I was the best looking preacher and the best, I don't know. He, that's how I remember it anyway. And, and uh, uh, wow, Brother Lacey, you're the friend of Brother Lacey. I'm the friend of Brother Lacey, but I'm the friend of God. You know, and I didn't learn that. That happened the day I got saved. The day I got saved, my name was recorded in the Lamb's Book of Life, forever indelibly placed there. Philippians 4.3, And I entreated thee also, true yoke fellow, help those women which labored with us in the gospel, with Clement also, and with other fellow laborers whose names are in the Book of Life. The day I got saved, I was seated with Christ in heavenly places. Ephesians 2.6, And hath raised us up together, and made us sit together in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. I don't understand how that works, because I am in the, the, the physical 2022 United States of America, and yet somehow in my spirit, I am seated together with Christ in heavenly places. It's as if I am already there. I received the blessed hope the day that I got saved. Titus 2.13, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of our Lord and Savior, our, Lord, our great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. The day I got saved, I had something to look forward to called the rapture. When before the rapture would have condemned me, now the rapture is a blessing to me and a hope to me. The day I got saved, I have a mansion being prepared for me in glory. John 14.2, in my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you uh, 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 that where I am, there you may be also. Yeah, yeah. The moment I got saved, my mansion began being built. We are born again the day I got saved. John 3, 3. Jesus answered and said to them, Verily I say unto you, except the man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. The day I got saved, I was anointed by the Holy Spirit of God. 1 John 2, 17. But the anointing which ye have received of him abideth in you, and ye need not that any man teach you. But as the same anointing teacheth you of all things, and is truth, and is no lie, and even as hath taught you, ye shall abide in him. The Holy Spirit of God anointed me the day that I got saved. I don't have to have a second anointing. Now, I want to walk in the power of the Holy Spirit of God, but I received the Holy Spirit of God the day I got saved. I am sealed by the Holy Spirit of God the day I got saved. Ephesians 1.13, in whom you also trusted after that you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom after that you believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Jesus Christ sealed. My body became the temple of the Holy Ghost the day that I got saved. 1 Corinthians 16.9, what know you not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you. I was indwelt by the Holy Spirit according to Romans chapter 8 and verse number 11. But if the Spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his Spirit that dwelleth in you. All of that happened the day I got saved. So, now let's preach. Do you really think all of that could happen to you and you not remember? If you're here this morning, you're watching online, and you're going, oh, I'm saved. I'm saved. When did you, when did you get saved? Well, you know, I've just kind of always been saved. No, 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 no. No, there's something, there's something wrong with that testimony, that all of that can happen, and you don't remember when it happened. Now, I don't want to be misunderstood. I'm not saying you've got to remember. It was April 24th at 2.13 in the afternoon, and the wind was blowing out of the south-southwest. And No. But you, I've known some men who forgot their wedding day. I've never known men who forgot their wedding. Like, when were you married? And they're like, uh, it's like in April. But if I said, do you remember your wedding? They'd be like, oh, yeah, I was at this church, and she wore white. <laughs> Lucky guess. We were a little slow on the uptick there. If all this happened to you, Listen, if all this happened to you and you don't remember it, can I suggest to you it probably didn't happen to you? Number two, there's no way you can have all these things until it happens to you. There's no way you can have all these things until it happens to you. You can do as much religion, you can do as much work, you can do as much effort, and you will not have these things until, until, until. And number three, and we're done. This is, this is fancy. Wow. Wow. Wow what? Don't make me preach 31 points again. 
wow, that happened, and, and more. That's the tip of the iceberg. And more happened to me the day I got saved. Let's not treat it like it's flippant. Let's not treat it like it's a small thing. Let's, let's, let's remember it. Let's recognize it. Let's herald it. Let's celebrate it. Let's tell others about it, how they can have it, how they can experience it. Because the day I got saved, the day I got saved, you know what I really did? I, I went, I don't want to go to hell. And I know Jesus Christ paid the price. And so I pretty much got saved just because I didn't want to go to hell. And thank God I'm not going to hell because the day I got saved. But I got a lot more than I bargained for the day I got saved. So did you. So did you. Lord, thank you for your word. Bless the preaching of it in the next hour. In Jesus' name, amen. We are about four minutes late. You are dismissed.